Our New Testament reading today comes from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18, um, and the verses that inspired our, our beautiful window. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of God for all of God's people. Be you may be seated. Thank you. Well, today is a Good Shepherd Sunday. A good shepherding is one of the most crucial uh, ministries in Christ's community. Jesus called himself a good shepherd, and he wants all of us to be a good shepherd just like he is. Without good shepherd, there is no future for Jesus' flock. Without good shepherds, the sheep would be slipped away and lost. Without sheep, no future for the church. So I, um, I want to share with you this morning a video clip that uh, shows how the church has lost a huge uh, number of young people. It is a painful reality, but we need to face that. And the church has lost about 59% of the young uh, adults between 18 and 29 years old uh, over the decades. And that percentage equals to around <clears throat> 8 million uh, young souls in USA alone. So this video uh, tell us what happened to them and why it happened and what we should do about, about that. It sounds like a lot of uh, topics that covers, but it takes only less than three minutes. So you have to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> so young generations, they tell us, the church, uh, you lost me, you lost me. So why do you say that? Why do they say that? Mostly uh, because the church does not make sense to them. They feel that they don't know the church anymore, and also the church does not understand them well anymore. <clears throat> so the communication has been broken somehow. In today's text, Jesus said um, the key to Good shepherding is a good communication. A good communication is two-way communication and not one way. All parties should open their hearts and minds and listen to one another. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, 
and I know the Father. Knowing one another, understanding one another, <clears throat> that is the key to the ministry of good shepherding. It, it is not just that Jesus knows all his sheep, but also his sheep needs to know him and understand him. And we know that it's not easy. Well, parents often assume that they know their kids, but most of the time, it is the parents who become the last persons who find out the truth about their kids. And kids assume that they know their parents. Well, they, do, they don't know what they are talking about. <laughs> Listening to one another and making sense to one another is not easy, but that is what we are called to do. That is one of the high callings that God has given us. <clears throat> we all have to open our hearts, our ears to one another to listen and to understand and accept one another. Jesus teaches us that a good communication is the key. Last Friday, I watched 2020. Bruce Jenner's in interview with Diane Sawyer. You may all know Bruce Jenner. He was once an Olympic gold medalist and called the greatest athlete of the world. But he is a transgender who has a female soul in his male body. So he was known all his life as Bruce. And he said, Bruce always lies. Bruce always lies. I could feel his pain and anguish. He said, I was lonely all my life. He was not understood by his loved ones, not because they did not love him, but because the real woman in Bruce's body was ever neither recognized, accepted, nor loved. The truth could not come out because of the way how the world treated transgender persons. So he was not known by the world, and the world did not know him well at all. <clears throat> the communication was totally broken, and for the same reason, 700,000 transgender people in USA are still living in the darkness. When the truth is suppressed, people suffer in darkness. So during the interview, Bruce Jenner's grown children came out to support their dad on his decision to be truthful to his identity. And one of his sons said, finally, everything made sense. He looked rather relieved to finally know the truth about his dad and to be able to understand his behaviors. When dad opened up his truth to the family, he was made sense to his children and he was known and understood. Bruce said that he now realizes that God might have put him in this world at this point to help people to open their hearts and minds and doors 
for transgenders like himself. Good shepherding can be many, many things. However, according to today's text, helping others to get better understanding is one of them. So I'm, I'd like to ask you, who has been, who was a good shepherd who helped you to understand better what your life is about and who you are as a follower of Jesus Christ? Have you had a good shepherd who has guided you and opened up door wide for you? I want to share a story of one of us here. It is about our one and only Vernon Noble. <laughs> I warned him this morning. <laughs> Some time ago, uh, I heard uh, from Sean, Sean Clark. Uh, he was looking for a church in Brentwood. At the time, uh, Sean had many questions about faith and about what a church should be like. And one Sunday, he visited our church, and at the door, he met Vernon. So Sean asked, hello, I'm looking for my church to attend. What is this church like? What do you think it is about? That was Sean's question. And Vernon answered, well, I don't know. I've been here over 60 years, but I have not still figured it out yet. <laughs> That's the answer, was it? Okay. <laughs> Guess what happened? Amazingly, his answer made sense to Sean. <laughs> Because of that answer, he decided to come to our church and eventually brought his whole family here. Our God is great, right? God used the right person at the right moment and opened the door wide for the wanderers. A good shepherd helps others to understand God better and tries to make sense their church to other people, to the world. And that is what a good shepherd is doing. That is what helps the sheep stay in the community and others to join the church. <clears throat> My older brother was a good shepherd for me when I grew up, grew up. He protected me from dangers. Having grown up together, I can say he was a very typical brother who liked to tease his uh, younger sister with pranks and jokes and all kinds of things. And I still remember uh, some of his scary pranks that gave me a heart attack. <laughs> By God's grace, I'm still here. <laughs> and I got once uh, lost on a busy street, downtown of a big city in Korea. I was about seven or eight years old, and I did not even know that I was lost. <laughs> I thought I was following my father, but it I, I was not following my father. I was following a stranger who just looked like my father from the back. So I, I kept following him, but thank God my brother, he noticed that I was lost, and he looked for me and found me. And if it were not for his help, I don't know where I would be right now. <laughs> My brother also gave me encouragement whenever I struggled with my insecurity and lack of confidence. And he once looked at me, 
seriously and said, Hassan, you are going to be a great person one day. Do not aim for too small or too low. That's what he said. I still remember that. And once I was um, fascinated, I think I was in middle, middle school, I was fascinated by a good-looking associate pastor who was newly hired by my father. I never missed his Bible study class. <laughs> he was so good. His charisma was so powerful and he looked so cute. And... But I did not know that he was manipulating the hearts of young people with a dangerous religious extreme beliefs. I did not know that. One day, my brother took me aside and tried to explain to me why the new associate pa pastor was dangerous. Before my brother's explanation, I thought that the associate pastor made sense to me, but sometimes, but after listening to my brother, I realized uh, my brother made a lot more sense to me. <laughs> so uh, later, the, the associate pastor was fired. Looking back, I feel so grateful for my brother who protected me <coughs> from dangers and from wandering. And he helped me to find ways that made more sense to me about God and the church. So frankly, so many things that we church does do not make sense to a lot of people. And we need to remember that not everything that makes sense is not necess necessarily the truth, like uh, we just heard from the video. That is why we need all the more good shepherds who listen with care and love and guide with wisdom. When we serve one another as good shepherds, we the church will become more and more making sense to all who enter the church door every Sunday. I want to share another story that I received from John Moore uh, during the week. It is about the church that did not make sense to a little girl. The story title is 57 Cent Church. A little girl stood near a small church from which she had been turned away because it was too crowded. I cannot go to Sunday school, she sobbed to the pastor as he passed by. And seeing her shabby, frowsy appearance, the pastor guessed the reason and taking her by hand and took her inside and found a place for her in the Sunday school class. The child was so happy that uh, they found a room for her. And she, she went to bed that night thinking of the children who have no place to worship Jesus. Some two years later, this child uh, laid dead in one of the poor apartment buildings. Her parents called for the kind-hearted pastor who had befriended their daughter to handle the final arrangement. As her poor little body was being moved, a worn and crumpled red purse was found, which seemed to have been rummaged from some trash dump. Inside was found 
57 cents and a note scribbled in childish handwriting which read, this is to help build the little church bigger so more children can go to Sunday school. For two years, she had saved for this offering of love. When the pastor tearfully read that note, he knew instantly what he would do. Carrying this note and the cracked red pocketbook to the pulpit, he told the story of her unselfish love and devotion. He challenged his deacons to get busy and raise enough money for the larger building. But the story does not end there. The newspaper learned of the story and published it. And it was read by a wealthy realtor who offered them a parcel of land worth many thousands. When told that the church could not pay so much, he offered to sell it to the little church for 57 cents. Church members made large donations. Checks came from far and wide. Within five years, the little girl's gift had increased to $250,000, a huge sum for that time. It was a long time ago. Her unselfish love had paid large payments. If you go to the city of Philadelphia today, you can find Temple Baptist Church with a seating capacity of 3,300, and also Temple University, where thousands of students are educated. In one of the rooms of, the, of this building, may be seen the picture of the sweet face of the little girl whose 57 cents so sacrificially saved made such remarkable history. Alongside of it is a portrait of our kind pastor, Dr. Conwell, author of the book, Acres of Diamonds, and says this is a true story which goes to show what God can do with 57 cents. The whole thing happened in the process of making sense, this church, that small church, to the little girl. So I'd like to ask all of you to think about this. How can we open our hearts and minds to make sense our church to people in the world? Let us make our church make sense more and more to this world with our opening hearts and mind and God's grace and truth. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you have called all of us to be your good shepherd. Help us to follow your son's step who opened the doors for everyone in the world with his grace and truth. Give us your wisdom, your truth and grace that we may do the same. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.